Breaking news. Declaration of war. Russian MPs blast U.S. plans to enforce North Korea's sanctions on foreign territory. This is on Russia Today, an RT.com article. I'm going to read this to you right now. The realization of this U.S. bill includes a proposed force scenario in which the U.S. Navy would conduct compulsory inspections of all ships. Such a scenario is simply unthinkable because it means a declaration of war. RIA Novosti quoted Upper House Committee for International Relations head Konstantin Kosachev as saying, The comment came shortly after the U.S. Congress approved the bill with additional sanctions against North Korea, allowing for the possible establishment of U.S. control over seaports and sea routes in the Far East, including Russian ports of Venino and Nakodaka, it's like vodka but with knock in front of it, and Vladivostok. And I'm not very good at Russian, and you probably know that. So I seriously apologize. No disrespect for getting those names wrong if I did. And the bill also expands the powers of the president of the U.S. to impose sanctions against individuals who violate U.N. Security Council resolutions. The deputy chairman of the state Duma Committee for Defense and Security, Franz Klinstvik, said that the possible possibility of external control over Russian seaports was out of the question, but the mere fact that U.S. lawmakers were discussing the proposal was a hostile act. He added that it was extremely unlikely the U.S. motion would force North Korea to change its course. And then here's another quote from one of the Russian Spokespeople, what immediately draws attention is the list of nations where U.S. congressmen want to have special control over seaports, he said. These are Russia, China, Iran, Syria. The United States is against trying to expand its jurisdiction, or the United States is again trying to expand its jurisdiction all over the globe. It is as if they were telling Russia, China, Iran, and Syria that these nations are suspects in crime, which is nonsense according to international law. Here's another quote. The U.S. administration will receive a symmetrical, adequate response to any unfriendly steps towards Russia and our allies. In any case, no U.S. ship will enter our waters. Krasov was quoted as saying by RIA Novosti. Last week, Russia expressed support for a Chinese initiative at the U.N. Security Council aimed at resolving the ongoing crisis in North Korea. And the draft resolution proposed that North Korea refrain from missiles and nuclear testing as well as the U.S. and South Korea undertake not to, also not to hold any military exercises in the region as well. In addition, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Gadilov has urged Washington and Seoul to reconsider the decision to put the terminal high-altitude area defense FAD system, the THAAD system, on the Korean Peninsula, warning that it will serve as a destabilizer as a destabilizing factor in the region, end quote. So read the article, Russia Today, RT.com, just came out, literally. I'm telling you guys, you know, while everybody's thinking about Kim Jong-un and how he keeps gaining weight to where he's literally having to stand up with canes now and have his elder generals that are in there, you know, they look like they're ready to go into an assisted living facility and spend the rest of their golden years there. And probably not so golden, are they? That's what my grandpa used to say. The golden years aren't as golden as people say they are sometimes. Why do they call them the golden years anyway? Yet I divagate. Now, there's an article on thehill.com that said, The House voted Thursday to impose new sanctions on North Korea. Amid heightened tensions, legislation approved handily on a 419 to 1 vote that would target North Korea's shipping industry and people who employ North Korea's slave labor abroad. What's interesting is there was one person that said, No, I'm voting against it. Who was that guy or gal? And, like, I'm holding my ground, man. North Korea is the good guy. They're the good guy. So, what they're not saying in this article is they're not talking about the Russian ports that they're going to, that they want to keep track of these ships that are going in and out, as well as Syria and Iran. And that's wild. I mean, that's pretty hardcore. And is that why there's been all these crazy secret meetings? North Korea is the scapegoat, the fall guy, the spark, the tip of the iceberg that could create a global war. Now, I'm not saying it's aliens. I'm just saying it's aliens. Like, what do you think? 
Am I looking into this too much? Now, I'm not saying there's going to be global war. I do see proxy wars on North Korea. Now, if Russia jumps in and China jumps in, then it's going to get nasty. It's going to get real nasty real fast. Thank goodness I'm going out to my bunker in just a couple weeks. No joke. Uh, May 19th to the 21st, I'm going out to South Dakota. I've got like this 2,100 square foot concrete still bunker out there in the middle of nowhere. And we're doing this X-Fest event out there. If you want to purchase a bunker or if you want to go in on a bunker with some friends, like you can fit up to 20 people in one of these things. I don't know how comfortable I'd be with 19 other people in one. But I mean, if you have very few bucks and you want to just have some type of some type of pol- not really an insurance policy, but kind of like that, because it just gives you that extra location that's off the grid, that's out in the middle of nowhere, that's secure, that's solid. Yet, I'm not even looking at it like that yet. I'm looking at it as just a vacation home because I'm going to turn it into a studio. I'm going to do a bunch of shows out there. I'm going to spend some time out there every year doing shows, going to the Black Hills, the Badlands. One of my favorite places in the world is in the Badlands. The Black Hills are definitely in the top five. Love it out there also. Plus, you've got Devil's Tower in Wyoming and Deadwood and Lead and and Keystone and Mount Rushmore and this place out there called like the Vortex or something with this weird gravity. There's a bunch of really cool stuff in the Black Hills. So I'm really excited about going out there. I think Robert's also doing like a three-year financing deal with no interest. So if you're interested in going to the X-Fest, make sure to RSVP, send me an email, guestbookings at leakproject.com, or you can go to terravivos.com. Let them know that you heard about them through Leak Project, if you would, please. That helps us here at Leak Project. And thank you for all of your support. Thank you for all of your contributions, whether it's a a constructive criticism comment, helping us learn something new, helping me learn something new, Uh, whether you become a premium member, that's definitely appreciated. We've got some neat gems that's in the exclusive section for premium members. Also, check out getthetea.com. I've been taking these supplements from getthetea.com called Colostrum, and it is amazing. The amount of energy that I have is through the roof. I love this stuff. So getthetea.com. Question everything and be the change you want to see. And are we going to war or am I just a conspiracy theorist? Or why are they painting a picture right now that's really pushing that? And one more thing I want to close out tonight with is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I interviewed a gentleman a while back, Anthony Carr, which has a plethora of documented psychic intuition scenarios where he's predicted something that would happen that has. And he's he was really... He got a lot of attacks when he did a podcast with me talking about how he thinks that Trump is going to be the one that ushers in this like World War III. So he's Canadian and he definitely has a a completely different political view of things than I do. Yet he's a nice guy and people are, you know, I think that people have the right to believe in what they want politically, don't you? Especially in a new era, people should have the right to believe whatever the heck they want as long as they don't hurt other people, in my opinion. So that should be the universal law. I mean, I was talking to Gerald Clark the other day about these, about the pillars in Atlantis that showed the laws of Toth, that that were literally the laws of the land. And there wasn't that many of them. You know, how many tens of thousands of laws are there just in the U.S.? The land of the free. Yet per capita, I don't even need to get into the statistics compared to the rest of the world. The land of the walking zombies. Imagine a society that literally had a handful of, a handful, like five rules or laws or regulations to follow, and people follow that, it could be amazing with the right set of, with the right applications, in my opinion. So what's your thought on that? And I kind of was going on a tangent there. I'm divagating. I'm attempting to say the word digress less because supposedly there's somebody else out there on YouTube that says the word digress a lot that I don't even watch, but I... Divagate. Divagate. Nanu, nanu, nanu. Later.